Good morning. So here we are. So I'm here again. Mark here. Oh, Mark sorry. there. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, I was going to start with the ladies. Of course. Fiona there. Sorry, this is Fiona. This is Mark. Some of you may have seen Mark already. This is Fiona. You won't see me because I never ever get my face on the screen. <laughs> so who's Fiona? Uh, so okay. Um, oh, who am I? And how did we get to this conversation? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, firstly, when I first met Anne, frankly, I was so resistant. I was like, keep that woman away from me. She's far too happy because I was quite happy being unhappy. I wasn't really that unhappy, but my history was of, um, I'd been a GP for, I'd been a doctor for about 20 years, a GP, and really trapped and, and, and pretty unhappy in my job. I used to keep saying, God, I hate my job. I wish I didn't have to do this. And I have got what I wished for, but it wasn't a very clever way of going about it. I became addicted to, um, to Valium, to diazepam tablets. Really, I was just trying to knock myself out. I just wanted to knock myself out because I couldn't deal with so much stuff. You know, I was in demand for constantly, you know, patients, receptions, nurses, family pressures, etc. Um, but my salvation has been um, animals. I've always had a lot of animals in my life. And I, I had about 12 horses around about that time, and many of whom had been rescued, etc. Um, and I just knew I had to keep my job because I had to earn money to look after these horses. And I got myself in that total, you know, kind of black hole about it. And so the way to keep my job was to knock myself out at night so I could sleep, so I could cope with the next day. I didn't have any other tools at that time. My husband and I had separated. It was a pretty desperate place. And, um, and, and I became so isolated. You know, people to me were just always asking of me, just... Um, I was always trying to give to them, and it was just exhausting. It was just so exhausting. Um, I didn't have any other tools for, I, I suppose, self-preservation or, or even being in touch with, with me, who I really am, because I, 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 I think I'd been quite a dynamic person previously. You know, I built up this place with these 12 horses, um, and, and yeah, it just all started shutting down, closing down, and I ended up actually injecting... Um, vials of midazolam similar sedative kind of stuff and i knew that it was pretty unlikely every week you know the, the stuff i was injecting on a couple of occasions um, which was shocking because i'd always felt i had to stay alive to look after the animals but at that moment um you know i i, I didn't think i would wake up i did wake up you know and um some well okay so I, I wasn't planning suicide, but, you know, I guess it would have been a suicidal thing that I did, you know. Um, I'm running out of steam. You need to prompt me a little bit. Um, or, I don't know. Um, so what do you have in common, then? Um, well, we've got in common that hopeless state of mind. Um, I've, ne I've never been as, as successful as Fiona. I've never had a... Um, um, my life's been very different from Fiona, but the thing we've had in common is that hopeless state of mind, I think. And um, um, I, know, I don't even think I know. I, I've had that, that hopeless state of mind. And, um, um, and, 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 and it's, it doesn't even feel as if it's hopeless at the time. It just feels there's utterly no choice. You, you know, it's not even a recognition of is there hope or no hope. It, it's just, there's just no choice. There's just no choice. Um, uh, so, so, so latterly, um, fast forward about four or five years, um, I, I had done a stint in a rehab place, um, which Mark had been in previously to that. We, Mark and I know each other from way, way back, teenagers. Um, and then he'd been in the same place. I ended up in the same place about, it was about 10 years later, I think I was in there. Um, that place all but destroyed me. Seriously, it really did. So this was an actual this rehab centre? This was an you know, established rehab centre. And um, yeah, really just crushed any last vestige of, of, of little spirit of me I might have had in me. I was made to feel so wrong, you know, and I came out feeling, you know, absolutely a wrong person. But I was very lucky that I had a structure around me. You know, my family were still supportive of me. My husband actually came back and, and we rebuilt our relationship. And I still had my home. You know, I still had a lot of structure. And that, that helped me to, you know, get back on my feet and 
that, oh my God, there was no joy in my life, you know. And when I met Anne, she was so joyful, you know. And I was Not like, so. yeah, and, and that's what I mean about, you know, I was quite happy being unhappy, you know, I, I couldn't, you know, I, I don't want to be that silly, joyful person. Um, and Anne first started to, to work with the horses. And so I was, you know, absolutely, come, come to the, you know, see the horses, but whoa, keep me out of it. You know, she mentioned running my bars a few times and I, I kind of like, mm, but I avoided, avoided, avoided. Um, but anyway, hanging out with Anne, you kind of, um, you change subtly. Um, and uh, so I have found myself dipping my toe in a little bit to access consciousness. Um, and Mark's arrival has been a great gift for me because it's really validated how powerful this stuff is. Um, uh, so I've had my bars run um, and noticed little incremental improvements. I had then started to smoke pot. Um, so I dealt with the, you know, dealt with the Valium, uh, um, but it had slipped back into smoking pot because it was just another way of hiding out. You know, I was still avoiding people very much so. Um, and it was just another way of hiding out. And uh, I would wake up in the morning, you know, oh, dreading, you know, another day, you know, particularly in the summertime when the days are really long, especially in this part of Scotland. It's just like, I'm not, I would try and sleep as long as I could. I also was on some antidepressants. I'm still taking them, but working towards getting off them. And they were helping me to sleep. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to sleep as much as I could, avoid the world. I, I did my little chores every day, looking after the animals. Um, but that, that was really all there was to my life. Um, um, there was certainly no creative potential in my life at all. Um, and little by little, that's beginning to excite me. And, you know, um, I feel like the old me, that dynamic person, um, yeah, she's beginning to kind of get back in there a little bit. Um, um, yeah, I got steam again. So, so you chose to read Marilyn's book, Marilyn so Bradford's yes, yes. Recovery that was, that was for you. That was probably was a really big step for me in accepting the, the, the gift that Anne could be to me. And, um, you know, um, I, I got Marilyn's book and it really resonated with me. And the reason it resonates so much was, you know, she speaks about the traditional sort of 12-step programs for addiction and alcoholism. And I suddenly realised, you know, actually for me, that wasn't the answer. It really wasn't the answer. Um, because it just, it seems to me that it, when I came out of the rehab place, I was told that I must not drink alcohol, take, go near any addictive substances because I'm an addict. I always would be an addict. I had to go to meetings, et cetera, et cetera. I did that for a couple of months, um, but it wasn't living life. It really wasn't living life. Um, and uh, so I fell away from all the meetings, et cetera. And because of the structures around me, I've managed to, to, to do okay. Okay, I slipped back into smoking pot, but you know, um, uh, I, I was kind of holding my own. Um, but I still had no recognition of, of like, yeah, the potential of me or, 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 or how I could live my life rather than just go from day to day with that, you know, wake up in the morning, feeling feelings of dread, get through the day, go to bed at night thinking, okay, well, I did that, you know, but still there was no, there was no greeting the day with any sense of excitement or fun. Um, um, so yeah, Marilyn, Marilyn's book was huge for me um, because it was just this different, different take on addiction and alcoholism and, it was so freeing, it was really liberating. Um, um, and then you did a virus class. Then, then, then actually, yeah, little by little I went in there. Um, so I, I then actually did the virus class. Um, so of course, the great gift of that was that when Mark popped into my life um, through this message that he put out on Facebook about being back in rehab, um, I was able to offer him something. Um, uh, because I could run the bars. Um, but importantly for me, I had Anne as well, you know, back in my art. So the poor guy has been, you know, double whammy. He's been bombarded. Um, but it's been so joyful. It's been really joyful. This guy, you know, who was smoking heroin just the day he arrived, the day he got off the bus. Um, but it's been a joyful experience. It's only been four days, four days, you know. Mm. And look at him, you know, he, he, he's looking, you know, tons, tons better. Um, and, um, and, it, and it's got this feeling of creation to it, you know, um, 
Well, you then went and wrote a play. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I started dabbling and, 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 and joined a drama club. You know, I started to, you know, life can be fun. I've got a part in a panto, for goodness sake, you know. Um, that's jolly. Um, yeah, so I, I, I've been sort of writing this, this play, and it's based in a rehab setting. Um, and just kind of looking at, you know, what, what we're fed in these institutions and contrasting it with the different message or approach that you get through access consciousness yeah so what access is for those of you that don't know is it really is just a set of tools processes and questions that allow you to change what isn't working for you and allow you to change anything that isn't working for you if you're looking to make a different choice and so that's what access is and you can find it in accessconsciousness.com and um, and i mean the, yeah. you know having your bars run as dane says it can be the best thing it can be like having a really good massage. Oh yeah, worst, worst case, case scenario, scenario you can like having a really good massage. Best case scenario, it changes your life. Mm -hmm. um, and um, because that book was was pivotal as well for you. Was yeah, for being you. I read his book, and and I think one of the things um, you know I I I, I have actually practiced the tools um, mm -hmm. out of necessity, you know, because I just knew I, I didn't want to be living like this anymore. I didn't want to wake up in the morning dreading the day and I mean I've got gorgeous dogs and they would give me a bit of joy um, I highly recommend hanging out with animals <laughs> but they're so non-judgmental and um, you know you get cuddles and all that sort of stuff but you know I, I, there is something about um, humans as well you know I, I was avoiding humans so much um, and um, to me hanging out with humans was, was exhausting it was a drain I would breathe a sigh of relief whenever I was back in my solitude um, but, you know, um, I'm actually beginning to see it's quite fun hanging out with, you know, some humans. <laughs> <laughs> um, the crazy ones. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Crazy, yeah. crazy, crazy happy. What if it is possible to be crazy happy? And what if you're not crazy? What if you're not wrong? Yeah, yeah. What if you've been fed a bunch of lies? And what if everything you've been told up to date isn't actually true for you? might be true for somebody else, it might work for somebody else, it might work really well for somebody else, but it may not actually work for you. So are you willing to see it from your point of view as opposed to in reaction to everybody else's points of view? What if you actually chose for you? Which is what you did when you chose to get on the bus. Yeah. <laughs> Set you on a different path. Yeah, it certainly has. And, and, um, it is strange, you know, what I will say is I've been, this rehab Fiona talked about, I've, I've been in it twice since February. And, um, um, and most recently I did a two week detox and I, I came out and I, and I started smoking here immediately. And um, I'd only been smoking it for a week. So I came up here last Wednesday. So, so I'm, you know, we might be looking at like, I can't be taking data heroin, but you know, I was and, 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 and um, you know, and, you know, I don't even know why I'm not, you know, I'm not, I can't tell you what's happened, okay, but, I'm, you know, it, it, this is about, you know, this is really difficult now because. So you, so you were, so you took care of when the day you came up, which was Tuesday. Of course, yes. Got on the bus. Yes. So did you have, like, I've never, unlike these two, I haven't actually taken any substances. Oh, oh my, my point of view was this reality is fucked up enough. I'm not going wrestling with anybody else's or anything else's. So that was my point of view and why I didn't necessarily, you know, it didn't gravitate to um, addictive substances. You may be a bit braver. We were trying to escape, you know, <laughs> and stood our ground. But we were trying to escape for sure. But yeah. did you like, I think all, right. all those things they yeah. say about her, is that what occurred when you, when you, oh, no, no, on the then? first day, no. And, um, you know, no, on the first day I came up and I was in a real mess and I, I did bring some pills with me to take the edge off. Okay, so, um, you know, I haven't suddenly gone from taking heroin to, to this, mm. but um, I did but take But the transition for stopping taking yeah. heroin yeah. has been remarkable yeah. with having yeah. the bars on. You know, I, I've seen people coming off heroin, of course. When I was oh yeah, you're rehab, a GP. <laughs> well, as a GP, but also in the rehab place. And, you know, geez, ooh, it's, that's a tough transition to make. And, and Mark seems to have kind of had a relatively... Yeah, absolutely withdrawal free yeah i have and i think i saw you i was in february i, I did a four-week detox i was in a real mess in february so i did a four-week detox and i left the rehab went back to the rehab did another detox came out to get her and again 
because that's the only way I've ever. So my coach, you know, I've got a head, a head that's just been bombarding me all my life, all my life, bombarding me. And I'm, and and the only way I managed to close it down was by using substances, alcohol initially, and drank for a long, long time. But then, I, you know, and then I got told you know you're an alcoholic, you can't drink. Well, okay, and you know whether that's true or not, I you know, I don't really drink now. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm I'm not. Anyway, but what I did was I needed to shut my head up, so I started taking drugs, and again that closed me down and shut me down, and did 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 exactly what I wanted to do: is just shut my head off, just leave me alone, and I'll just. It was the only way. It's my. It's the only answer I've ever found to my crazy head. And then somebody at this point is still coming here, and actually told, you know, maybe you're not wrong, maybe. Maybe all this stuff in your head is actually, you know, it's okay. It doesn't belong to you. Or it doesn't, absolutely, it <laughs> doesn't belong to me. Which, you know, I've, I've been bombarded with this stuff. I don't tell me, I, you know, I don't understand. I'm not even going to give you a lecture on bars. I'm not, I'm really not. But, but, but what I will say is that, that, that something quite magical is happening. And I'm sure it's people are going to be sitting there going, this is bollocks. Yeah. What are you talking about? It's fucking horseshit. But, you know, and I probably wouldn't. I'm, I'm that kind of person. I'm sitting there, look at those idiots, they're talking bollocks, they're hearing at it, fuck off. You know, but it's actually true. It is true. And sorry, go on. Right. Yeah. The, 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 the tools that really helped me initially, because when I say I was smoking pot, it wasn't a bit of pot. It was like first thing in the morning, throughout the day. And there's no doubt my primary relationship then was, was smoking pot, you know, um, and I was keeping it fairly well hidden from, from most people. Um, but one of the big tools that really helped me was this recognition that, you know, 98% of the feelings of dread or the screwed upness wasn't mine. You know, that, that um, you know, I've been aware of, of other people's stuff and, and taking it on board. I and mean, can you imagine, um, you know, working in the, in the, the health in, in the NHS in, in Britain, um, you know, and not, not knowing that that's what was happening. You know, I remember psychologists saying to, that I worked with saying to me, you know, remember your barriers, remember your barriers. I'd say, oh, yes, yes, yes. No idea what barriers were anyway. Um, still don't know, really know. But, but one thing I, I certainly wasn't aware of was that, that stuff or people around me or stuff around me could actually really seriously influence my feelings, thoughts, feelings, emotions inside of me. So learning that 98% of that doesn't come from me, that's been a really, really useful tool. And it does work, you know, with practice, it does work. Mm -hmm. um, so the tool there is for every thought, feeling and emotion that comes up, ask who does that belong to? And if it lightens up at all, it's not yours. It's not yours. So you can, you can return it to sender 10,000 fold with consciousness attached, or you can just ask the question, well, who does that belong to? So then little things would happen, um, you know, using the tools and reading Marilyn's book, I was able to recognize that, um, you know, well, maybe I didn't need to have a joint, you know, immediately, you know, I could delay having a joint a bit later. And, and my focus began to, to, to fade away from the, the need to smoke pot to block everything out. Just, just started to fade away, you know? Um, until eventually I, I, I made a, a definite choice and, you know, chucked all the stuff in the fire and, and haven't really looked back since then. But initially it was just, it was just a fading away. It wasn't a sudden, I got, you know, stopped doing it. It was just a fading away of the importance of it in my life because I'd found a, another way to help. Um, like the, the, the you know, um, expansiveness and feeling spacious. And by the way, that was also, you know, fantastic for, for, working with the horses um, mm. uh, um, you're willing to be a space yeah yeah and that's something that I think is key that anybody watching this gets is that in playing with Fiona or Mark I don't have an agenda I'm not looking to fix anybody I'm not looking to change anybody I'm looking to see well you know what else is possible here what what contribution could I be to assisting you changing this because you, you you know there's there's a different choice being made and a change is occurring it's like okay so what contribution can i be to that i don't know what's going to happen to either of these two crazy people mm -hmm. after we do this thing mm -hmm. yeah and it doesn't matter because they yeah. both made a different choice they both now know that they can make a different choice the That's choice is a possibility whereas which is very different 
from living in a no choice universe where I have been a lot of the time myself. And you, you know, two of the questions that kept me going the last six months are what if I'm not wrong and what can I choose? And the what if not, I'm not wrong, it was obviously, you know, it was a big one for me also because, you know, that is a fall from grace. You know, when you lose your job as a GP because you've been addicted to pills and have been taking them. From pillar prison. of society. Yeah, yeah, pillar of society, me, yeah. And, and, and actually it's quite a small community that I, I live in up here and I was all over the front page of the local papers. That was how my parents found out what was going on. You know, I had, they didn't know what was going on. They live up here, but they had no idea what was really going on till they saw the headlines of the newspaper. So, um, you know, Craggy, um, that'll cause you to retreat a little bit when you've been all mm. over the front page of the paper. Um, and, and yeah, well, you know, actually, you know, I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. I was just trying to survive and do the best I could. And then, um, uh, I, 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 you know, I was just, as I say, I was just trying to knock myself out so I could sleep, so I could cope. Um, and of course, it didn't work. It didn't work. Mm. Um, and, and, in, and anyway, what, what a way to live your life, you know? Um, uh, yeah. Interesting. One of the things that came up was, you know, about your life purpose. And as Anne points out, your, your life purpose is just to be joyful. Well, you the know? purpose of life is to have fun. Yeah. Are you having any? <laughs> yeah. Getting there. Getting there. Are yeah. you having any? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this is like from my point of view, where where I came, I've been one of the life seekers. And you know, why do we do the things we do? And you would make. Why would you make? that choice why do we do that why do we end up in you know going around in these circles would have been prior to access where i would have been functioning from and i was so earnest in my seeking it was obnoxious it, i was obnoxious i was so serious and so up my own arse that you know there wasn't a whole lot of room for anything else you know joy ease glory you know we're not going to come up charging over the horizon because there just wasn't room for it because it's so many set points of view about this is the right way to do things, this is the wrong way to do things, I have to get this right in terms of this reality's constructs. All the while knowing that none of it's real. There was a knowing that none of it is real. Um, and what the access tools have given me is the bridging pieces, the questions and the bridging pieces between where somebody is and the infinite possibilities that they can choose. And the, the knowing thing, you know, um I've always known I'm not a bad person, you know, I've always known I'm not a bad person. I have felt that I'm a failure, a disappointment, all of those things. I've always known I'm not a bad person. And I think there's a lot of, um, you know, al alcoholics, addicts out there, um, crikey, they might be doing crazy stuff, bad stuff, stealing, whatever. Um, but certainly my experiences in that rehab place was when, you, you, you know, you found out about them, who they really were, they weren't bad people. Mm -hmm. And the sad thing is that they often come out of places like that and because they don't have the tools for, for making other choices, their life isn't about choice. Their life is about, I have to go to a meeting every day, I'm a recovering alcoholic, I'm a recovering addict. So they can hold their own, like I held my own for a little bit, um, but eventually they may start using again, like I did smoking pot. But anyway, holding your own, what's that about? You know, there's more to life mm -hmm. than just holding your own. Mm -hmm. So what if you could create your reality rather than living a prescribed reality by somebody else's fantasy of what reality ought to be, should be, could be? Um, and what if you just choose 10 second increments? What can I choose now? Okay, that was interesting. What can I choose now? What can I choose now? The 10 second thing that kind of helped me as well when practicing with the tools, because you do recognize that things change from, from moment to moment, 10 seconds to 10 seconds, whatever. Um, you know, so the feeling of dread in the morning didn't have to define my whole day. You know, I could mm -hmm. use the tools and I could shift it. And, um, and it might come back again later on in the day, but um, being aware of my, myself a bit more, um, I could notice when there was some relief from it. And it's important, I think, to acknowledge the relief from it as much as you can acknowledge, oh, this is awful, I feel terrible. Also acknowledge just the little chinks that you might get mm -hmm. that, 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 you know, um, that there's a bit of relief sometimes and then build on that um, and I have found that the tools and having my bars run has just been just building on that incrementally um, yeah so I'm in a very good place now because I did the bars class um, I can run Anne's bars she can run my bars there's no money exchanging hands um, we've been running Mark's bars and then um, he's actually been our bars. <laughs> 
Um, you know, so the bars class is a great thing, you know, or you make bold for the, the cost of it, but it's a great thing in that it, it kind of sets you up for, for life, you know? All you have yeah, to do is hook up with another bars practitioner and you get your bars done. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And it's, it's, so the bars class uh, is, a, is a day class and at the end of that day you are a bars practitioner. Um, it is so simple. Children come and run bars with totally ease. In fact, they're way better at it than the adults. Um, and they're a huge gift. And that's one of the, the gratitude, like the gratitude I have for Gary. <laughs> Sorry, for Greg. Uh, <laughs> we've done a bit of that. We've done a lot of laughing, a lot, lot of laughing, crying. Written. Yeah. And when you do feel like you want to cry, just go for it for a couple of minutes and you'll find yourself laughing hysterically. Yeah. The, the gratitude I have for Gary Douglas and yeah. I just. <clears throat> yeah. Do you know? Um, and Gary always she's, says, she's had it just as tough. She's not been an addict or an alcoholic, but it's been just as tough, actually, for Anne. You know, and all humans struggle. I think. So the <laughs> yeah. and Gary says that you know you're a success if you can contribute and change one person in your life. You know, if you can, can change one person. And what's gone on here over the last mm. while between us with the horses? Yeah, yeah, and bars at the yard, which. Um, it's very exciting. And, and the, other, the, the other thing for me was, um, you know, like I've been pretty resistant to having a best friend, you know, because, <laughs> um, you know, and, and, and you know, I don't like it. I've got a bit of a best, time, <laughs> best friend now, you know, and, and uh, um, yeah. Yeah, so Gary and Dane, the, the gratitude I have for those guys, and Gary, uh, Gary Douglas and Dr. Dane here are the, the co founders of Access. And People come to that from all walks of life, like Marilyn Bradford, Susanna Mittermeier. Um, you have people that come with their speciality to, to an access class. And they go away and they then have these tools and they apply it to their speciality. So pretty much anything you're into or interested in, somebody in access is going to be a specialist in yeah. that area. Yeah. Or so anything you're struggling with, you know, relationship, um, if, you know, divorce. You know, yeah, divorce, everything and anything is, yeah. is, is covered, um, but their patience, yeah. Gary and Dane's patience with all of us who show up in class, and with all of us that ask them questions, and the same questions often consistently. Um, their patience, their allowance, and their, their willingness to just keep going and, and keep creating and cre keep changing is, yeah, I'm just incredibly grateful to them. Um, and it's, it allows your willingness to choose for you, um, allows everybody else to choose for them. And as Gary says, you come to class, you get your bars done, and everybody else gets better, which is quite funny. Well, the um, and it's actually true because you can see it. The funny show stuff. up in your family and friends. Yeah, I mean the funny it stuff. There's a, there's a lot of funny stuff, you know. And, and uh, you know, I, I've been gradually exposed to the funny stuff, but Mark's had it full on and there's a lot of Yeah, we threw Mark in at the deep end. Really. Yeah. But there's also a lot of humour, you know. You I've just come back from Maestro class, so um, last week in Rome uh, with um, Dr. Here and uh, would you mind passing me some tissue yes, please, dear. so I'm not snotting all of the video. Yes, dear. Um, and one of the, is, do you just walk past it, sweetheart? One of the demands in my universe is that, right, this, I'm not, not going to be me anymore. Okay, you do. Just there. Oh, that's not tissue, that's kitchen roll. Oh, doesn't matter to do the job. <laughs> I'm just going to get some nice tissue. Um, my favourite class in the whole of the access, Pantheon of classes, and there is a huge amount of ways to play with this, is the Being You class. And Dr. Dane here wrote a book called Being You, Changing the World. It's on audio for those of you who don't like to read. And can I just say that when, when I first saw the book and started to read it, I was like, I got the Being You bit, change the world. I don't know, I want to change the world, I don't have the energy to change the world. But actually change the world just means change your world, mm -hmm. you know, and that has a knock-on effect. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you don't have to be, you know, you're not some sort of, it's just very small little things that, that makes your life better, but you will find that there is a ripple effect and, uh, and it's funny how start, stuff starts to show up. Um, so how different will, just hypothetically, because we don't know what you'll choose after this, but how different will your world, show, if you choose to be you, how different will your world be in the world of those around you if you actually choose to be you? It'll be astonishing. <laughs> um, yeah, I've sat very quietly and listened because, you know, I don't have a lot to say about bars. I don't know, I don't know much about it, but um, what I do know is that it's, it's, it's made a big shift. It's given me a big shift, big shift. And, um, I, um, I can't quite, I don't quite understand it. Um, but um, 
it's 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 maybe it's giving me an answer, maybe an answer. I, I don't I don't know. Anne, Anne has told me a lot. I've, I've been given books. Fiona's told me a lot, and um and they, they've they've said you know he, he, here's here's an answer. You know there's a you have a choice now. You I've got a choice. You know I can go back to Edinburgh. You know I can go back. I can start taking her again. No problem. I can do that. Or. Or. Or what else is possible? I can take this Literally. opportunity because this is, you know, this, <clears throat> this actually shouldn't be happening. In my, you know, this, this wasn't on yeah. my agenda at all. You're not you know, meant to be in the morgue today, Mark. Exactly. But, you know, this is a very strange series of events have brought me to this place right now. And, and, um, I'm not, it doesn't matter what it, what it was, but it's, it's been a, it's, 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 and what if it's amazed me? What if there amazed being an answer me. is one of the biggest lies we've bought? Well, the great thing I'll tell you, one thing I've heard is about lies, right? Lies, right? Lie, no fear. Fear, fear, fear. is a lie. Fear, is, fear a lie. is a lie. They've kept telling me that, and I, you know, fear is a lie. Wow, mm. imagine that. Fear is a lie. That's my, mm -hmm. that sits in my head just now. Most, most you know, we're gonna, they're gonna write me a list, a cheat sheet, things I, I need to read and write and just go, right, who's is this, who's is this? Because, do you know, I've got so much baggage, you know, I'm way down, I've got people in my head, you know, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, and you know, they're not mine, they're not mine. They're absolutely not mine. You know, I didn't tell myself I was rubbish when I was a kid. Yeah. I certainly yeah, didn't yeah. do that, I didn't do that. Yeah. You know, but, okay, I'm not gonna get into the blame game, but, but, my yeah, opinion of myself is you build, 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 really you buy it. Absolutely. I've bought, I've bought, I've bought so much stuff. I've bought so much stuff. I've, you know, I've induced a lot of stuff onto my own, you know, on my own self. I have, I've, um, you know, I, I, I've, I've got a lot of personal responsibility, but, but, you know, but, but the great thing is they've come here, I've come here, I've been thrown in here and, um, you know, and, and, and they've said, they've, they've just said stuff to me. You just asked your questions. Ask really, questions. I've, I've, I've been given a book, Dane's book. I've been watching DVDs. I've been going to sleep at night, listening to YouTube and stuff about, you know, it's all right to be me. That's your right. You know, it's okay. And, um, and as Dane says, what if you being you is the single biggest gift you can give the world? What an opportunity. My God, what an opportunity. Mm. What an opportunity. So, yeah. Um, what an opportunity to and it just occurred, to be you know, okay. One, one of the things in the 12 step program has been about making amends to people. And we spoke a little bit about that. And, you know, does that, does that keep you feeling wrong if you're constantly running around trying to, trying to make amends? You know, do you need to be making amends? You know, because you weren't wrong. You were just trying to do the best you could. Um, it's time to break free of it all, you know, and just... Mm -hmm. um, what if you can actually create a life that you desire to live? And it might not look like anybody else's. Mm. It might have no resemblance to anybody else's. And how many of you... And you still might be judged and criticised. Oh, you will be. <laughs> Damn sure. Yeah. You know, even if you're, you, know, you get off the alcohol, you get off the drugs, and you live life the way, you know, and it all starts, to, you still might be, you know, criticised yeah. and judged, but you'll have a way of um, shaking that off. Mm. Interesting I'm, point of view they have. That tell tell me if I'm wrong here, but the thing I've got from it is just like, okay, it's okay to be you, okay? And, um, okay, this, I, um, you know, like it's like crazy, but you know, they've said that's okay. You you know, so I'm going to be able to, I'm going to be able to, you know, be, 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 well, be creative with your crazy. Exactly. Yeah. Be creative. My God, what an opportunity. What an opportunity. And, you know, you don't know me for either, of course not, but, you know, Oh, just, what, an opportunity. what an opportunity what an yeah. opportunity I just feel so you know it's it's it's, it's so what, what it is it's, and if you have somebody in your life if you're sitting here and you're aware of people in your life that you feel are depressed or suicidal or, and you're wondering what else you can be or do in their universe you know if somebody's going to take their life we can't change that that's a choice um that, that's a choice. And what you can do is ask questions and go, okay, so, you know, what else is possible? What other choices do you have? Um, and I think one of the things that I celebrate these two for and they're willing to, their willingness to choose is that they become an invitation to a different possibility by virtue of being who they are.
they start to invalidate other people's realities by virtue of who they are. And if they keep being that, they'll keep invalidating other people's reality and this reality and create a life they actually desire. Are we going to touch a wee bit on suicide? Okay, good. Um, I was just seen to think, with a, um, as a heroin addict, I've, um, I have, I've tried to kill myself um, with, with heroin, put, you know, putting what I thought would kill me into, into my body, but it didn't kill me. Um, so... So I, I, I got to a stage where, where I, I didn't want to be a heroin addict, but I, I didn't want to, but I did, and more importantly, I didn't want to be on this planet. I, just, I didn't want to, I thought I'd done my bit. I'd, done, I, I'd gone as far as I was ever gonna go. And um, so this is, this is why sitting here now is very strange because um, I planned to die last Saturday, on Saturday. That's what I planned, days ago. two Today's days ago. Yeah, it's Monday Today's today. Monday. So on Saturday, two days ago, I, I had planned in Edinburgh. I, I and you didn't it, tell me that, by the way, when, no, when we first got caught. No, no, we did no, not know. You know yeah. We were not trying to save this guy. Yeah. You know, we didn't yeah, know. Exactly. We had no idea. Um, yeah. Which is why when Fiona said to me, a strange events happened, Fiona said to me, right, get on a bus and come up here. And I just said, yeah, okay. Well, I had no intention to get on that bus because my intention had been to go through my week and be good to everyone. Put the that I knew. Face on the exactly. Yeah. Say I'm fine. Everything's good in my world. I'm happy. I was going to have to do something very difficult. Um, yeah, I was going to have to. Um, I was going to have to. I was going to have to tell my two sons. And I was just going to write a letter to. I wasn't going to write them individual letters. I was going to write a letter, just a card to them both. And tell them how much I love them. Go on, go for it. Just yeah, but told them it was time to go. I was time. I was going to go. It was my. I was going to go. And 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 so. So on Saturday, I was going to, on Saturday, I planned, I was going to go to the fourth road bridge and I'd been to the fourth road before and I'd walked up there and, and maybe, I don't know what, there's people watching you and this van came up and this guy said, are you all right? And I went, well, not really. So he said, get in the van, he took me off. So I'd even planned my walk along the bridge. I was going to walk along like a tourist and have a lovely time and walk along the fourth road. Went, Isn't it joy and lovely and lovely? So no one tried to save you. Exactly. And then I was just going to take a header off the bridge. Um... I was going to do that, and um, but when Fiona said to me, "Get on the bus," and I got on that bus, that tells me that there was somewhere, somewhere deep down, something deep down, was saying, "You know, you don't really want to do this. You don't really, you don't really, you don't really." So I didn't, and I haven't, and I, I didn't go off that bridge, and I, and I um. And I've been, you know, the universe is thrown a into this. It's a funny place because, thrown you know, one of my things about being very isolated is I don't have Facebook, I don't have social media or any of that stuff. Um, I have a Facebook page and, and there'd been this random message from Mark. We, we, we've known each other since we were 17, but not, we don't keep in touch. I don't keep in touch with anyone, really, you know. Um, the irony and, is we were looking to get you on the meeting to create you know, what, what the Access Virus practitioners and, and facilitators could create for the Suicide Prevention Week. That's what we were looking yeah. for. We were looking to hook you up on that meeting That's when right. we saw his best. So, so, we're, so because I had my thing open and my Facebook page open, which I never look at, and we were mm. looking at this other stuff, here's this message that popped up. And it had been a month before he posted the message. Um, anyway, the universe somehow, you know, prompted me to respond to that message, have a telephone conversation, um, and... Here he is. Um, and, and where did that come from that, you know, I think, I think for example, I was, I was become, beginning to become the invitation to, to, to what else is possible. And um, you were also willing to follow the energy rather than what your head was. Yeah, saying. because, you know, there, were, there obviously were um, a lot of people around me who would have been telling me, don't go there, don't get in touch with this waste space who's been taking heroin and you know what you play and especially with my history you know like and and so I had to do that whole um truth you know 
do I invite Mark up or not? Because there's a big part of me that wants to help people. And, you know, maybe, maybe I've been a little bit addicted to that also. And that may be in GP pretty tough as well, you know, really wanting to help people. Um, so I had to do that whole truth thing, you know, do I invite him up, up or not? And, uh, um, and, and, and here we are. Um, if I'd been living in that whole, um, if I was constrained in the rightness and the wrongness, I wouldn't be allowing Mark anywhere near, um, which, what a shame that would be. Because, you know? yeah, what a shame that would be. I think, I don't know, but, uh, yeah, I've known Fiona for a long time, and we haven't kept in touch. That's probably why I'm here, because I have no... Anyone you kept in touch with. <laughs> exactly. Most, most people that kind of know me now would, wouldn't touch with a barge Really wouldn't. And, um, you know, they wouldn't. If I'd said, can I come and stay? They'd say, no, no way. Because they're probably worried about stealing, I don't know, stealing stuff to go get her. So nobody, nobody would have, you know, so, you know, this is... Is it a miracle? A miracle we allow miracles in access? Is it a miracle? In, in access, you're probably a miracle walking. Well, and that's what all of us are. You, yeah. You're born onto this planet. You arrive on this planet a miracle walking. Yeah. Uh, with a willingness to contribute the joy you be to those around you. Um, and then the insanity of this reality gets in on you. Mm. I think, mm. you know, it gets in on you. But yeah, you're, you're a miracle walking. And what if we acknowledged... I mean, I've always wondered that as well. You know, you look at the stars and you look at the fact that we're embodied mm. and we move around. And oftentimes it strikes me as like, why aren't we just in total awe of the fact that we actually have all these functioning bits and moving parts and, you know, that, you know, that how we show up is a fucking miracle. And so, yeah, you're a miracle and absolutely an access. Miracles are allowed. Not only are they allowed, they're definitely... I think, I think <laughs> also, you know, what I'll say is like on Wednesday, last Wednesday or Tuesday, I mean, I was in such i was in such a mess or really such a such a mess and, and, and i mean almost as soon as i came up here somebody's got to go boom and gone gone because I'm, I'm not i'm not a mess i mean I, I can i'm functioning as a human being you know i'm i'm i'm, I'm and a lot more than the maybe less than 10 percent that you were functioning oh, absolutely you know you know you feel yourself yeah. with that job you just it, it, you know yeah um, it's, a, it's, it's incredible, it's absolutely incredible. And, and I, I want but, you know, do you, did you somehow create the invitation? You know, you somehow created it, you know, anyway, you know. I think what, what happened was when we spoke, you were the one person I didn't do an upbeat, hi Fiona, I'm fine. But even before that, your little random message on it, Facebook. Well, yeah, what, you know, yeah, yeah. I just, because, it, you know, I was sitting in that rehab and, I, and I, I saw you and I went, oh, tell Fiona, guess where I am, yeah, Fiona, yeah. guess you'll never believe where I am. And I, I actually thought I sent it in February. Uh, maybe it wasn't. Oh, well, it might, might be. Yeah, but I think it was definitely, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, so for, for, for these things to have happened, and little Just steps, pop up, pop you know, up, as Dane says, when you, yeah. when you have, you know, going through the mire, and um, because, you know, I've been diagnosed with manic depression, depressed, all of that kind of stuff. But when you're going through them, so I still have bad days, is what I'm meaning by that. Mm. I can still have bad days, like all of us can. But, you know, <coughs> just, just the little step, two more steps, you know. Mm. And, yeah, take the next step. Yeah. And with practice, you can get through the mire just so much quicker. Yeah. And there comes a tipping point where you end up surrounding yourself by amazing, with amazing beings who are well, willing to do something different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you, you can create greater. So I, I, like, I mean, I'm really grateful to these two very soon to, 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 to access, to yeah. be vulnerable enough to have this conversation so that it might contribute to anybody else out there. And as Gary says, if it contributes to one person, then... You know, yeah, it's it's contributed. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm really grateful for the the vulnerability it takes to basically show up as you. Although I was doing everything in my power not to be a vulnerable, you know, but little by little, my guards come down, um, and of course, by not by making myself you know not vulnerable, I was also preventing 
receiving anything you know really mm -hmm. so the vulnerability is part of a, you know starting to receive from people or the universe or you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what it's else gratitude i have the gratitude i you know i i can't <laughs> I, I was going to say these words because they're true. You know, I am so grateful for this, for this. So, so grateful. I, you know, I'm, you know, it's just words because, you know, I don't, I don't I've, I've got a lot of strange emotions going on, but it's not like, so grateful. You know, I, I can't, but I, I, I truly am. I truly am. I'm, I mean, yeah, and that's a good I'm starting really point. That's a good starting point. Just starting to, to, to starting to feel grateful. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and you know, if, there, if, you, if there's anyone out there and you you are thinking at the end, this is the end. This is the end. I'm going to kill myself. You know, you might well do, or or, or you might well, you might not. But just check somewhere, somewhere. Just check somewhere and go. Maybe maybe I can just cling on, cling on for a little bit longer and. And firstly, the thing might be that that initial reaching out, because that was a little reaching out. Oh, of course, of course. Yeah. A, little, a little bit of reaching yeah. out, because I think that's one of the things addicts and alcoholics don't do, you know. And I certainly would never, ever, ever have asked for help from mm. anyone, really. You know, so, um, yeah, just, just firstly, that little reaching out, um, and, and, uh, and then what else is possible? Mm. Yeah. I think... Uh, this is kind of difficult, this because I'm, you know, this is just a, this is this is a blessing because I don't even think I said to you, you know, I'm, you said to me when we spoke, you went, you don't sound okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I said you said you don't sound okay, and then I think of course you're in here on the bus and here, and we're very, I'm very walking good, in yeah. very jolly and making me smile, a stunning yeah. smile. I was looking at her going, like, God, oh, this woman's making me smile. Why and that, and that was smile? a real smile. You know, we're, we're very, very good at it. And our poets can be very, very good at putting the mask on. Yeah. I mean, exceptionally good at it. I mean, I was, you know, I was functioning as a GP for a while. I mean, one uh, putting a mask on, not asking for help. Um, and you can put a smile on, but the real smile that Mark, you know, has on his face, um, mm. which this lady provokes, on a daily basis. And you, and yeah. you, yeah. and your dogs, and your there's, horses, there's and your... different types of smiles. Mm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so thank you. As there, as there are different types of hugs, by the way. <laughs> you know, I'm, I've always been very resistant to hugging. Yeah. And I'm getting there a little bit with hugs, because, um, yeah, there are very different types of hugs, you know. <laughs> I collect them, hugs. I collect hugs. <laughs> So, what well, are you not going to flowers? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so thank you both. Um, thank you. And this is by way of conversation to acknowledge what has changed for all three of us over the last couple of days. This is only like three or four days. Mm -hmm. We've been playing, well, we've been playing for a couple of, mm -hmm. a couple of months now. Um, and it's by way of an invitation to a different possibility. And, yeah. Go get your bars from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> First step, find find someone that can find run somebody to run your bars. So accessconsciousness.com. Um, see, yeah. see who you can track down. Yeah. There's facilitators yeah. all over the globe. And and you know you, you you know you may find that you know finally you're encountering people who don't judge and criticize. Mm. That's huge. Yeah. yeah. So what else is possible now? That. Thank you both. We're good to go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Bye. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.